Today we're talking about something that is apparently very controversial, and that is money on the Appalachian Trail. How much money I spent on the AT, how much money you're quote unquote supposed to spend, and just a lot of questions that people have about this topic. So I got the idea to make this video recently because back in 2021, I actually made this whole nine minute video kind of outlining exactly how much money I spent on the trail and how much money I spent in each category. So like resupply, restaurant, gear shops, accommodations, and I just broke it all down and laid it all out there. I tracked every single dollar I spent on that through hike and I was very thorough in making that video. I also made a YouTube short, which was only one minute long, and it was just very straightforward. This is how much money I spent on the AT. And in 2021, that number was about $5,800, and I was out on trail for four months. And I thought that was good. I didn't really think anything of it. I just put that number out on the internet and I got a lot of comments back. So on the YouTube Shore, it kind of took off recently. It has over 100,000 views and over 300 comments. And a lot of the comments are from people who maybe didn't follow me on the AT, people who don't really know me or know the through hiking culture. And there were just a lot of questions and a lot of the questions weren't really phrased nicely. Um, so I actually printed out all the comments I got on that video. Some are questions, some are assumptions, some are just, I don't know. We're just gonna go through them all and have a little chat about money on the Appalachian Trail today. The first question is a very good question. And if you're not that familiar with the through hiking culture yet, and you're new to it, I understand how a lot of people could be wondering this. And that is, I don't understand how people can take six months away from work. And there are a lot of different scenarios where people make through hiking happen. My specific scenario is not very common, and that's that I own my own business and I through hike during the slow season. And I have a couple employees that can continue to run my business while I'm on the trail. So I feel like I got pretty lucky with that. My mom is very hands-on in my business and she actually enjoys kind of taking care of it while I'm away. But a lot of other people either through hike right after they retire, they through hike right after they graduate college and they haven't gotten into a career yet. Some people work a career for a while and then they quit, take some time off, they have all this money saved, they through hike and then they come back and figure out something else to do because maybe they wanted that change in life anyways. So there's a lot of different scenarios and everyone is very different when it comes to that. I don't wanna say often, but I get it sometimes and that is that I'm a trust fund hiker and kind of makes me laugh. I tell this comment to my parents and it definitely makes them laugh because it's not true. I'm almost 30. I've been <laughs> working for half my life. I make all my own money and yeah my parents don't pay for me to through hike my mom helps me in my business but that's because she wants to and she's not like giving me money to go like leave work and hike so that's i don't know why people would say that i feel like there hasn't really been anything i've said on the internet that sh should make people think I'm a trust fund hiker, so that's interesting. This guy says it's crazy that I spent $5,800 on the trail because they were able to do the whole thing with $900, and that is great, but it's also not a competition. <laughs> I feel like some people online make it seem like a competition on who can spend less on their through hike, which doesn't really make that much sense to me because there are so many different ways to experience the trail and if you're someone who just really enjoys spending as much as much time on the trail as you can you sleep in your tent every night you don't really spend time in town if anything you just go to resupply and then come back the same day and you don't get stuck into like that town vortex it could be pretty cheap but the way I like to through hike, I love towns. I love checking into hostels. I like going to as many restaurants as I can to get a full nutritious meal because when I am on trail, I kind of eat like crap. So that's just the way I hike. And my style of hiking, I definitely could not do that in $900. I did some math and in my four months 
through hiking. I spent $1,400 just at grocery stores. So I don't think I was buying like the most expensive food at the grocery stores, but I was buying some things that I think my body needed. I was buying fruit and vegetable smoothies. I was buying trail mix and I don't know, some fun things that would keep my morale up. But yeah, if someone told me to go through hike right now for $900, I probably couldn't do it, but there's a lot of people that probably could. <laughs> One person said it just sounds like I went shopping the whole time, which doesn't really make any sense to me because you don't shop on a through hike because every time everything you would buy, you would have to carry. And I really hated carrying unnecessary weight. So the only thing I bought was food to eat and maybe to replace gear here and there. I Bought, like a new backpack i would have to buy new shoes every now and then but it wasn't a shopping trip so that was weird <laughs> someone said it sounds like the bars did well i actually don't drink that much i probably had two maybe three drinks my entire 2021 through hike but i did go to a lot of restaurants i bought a lot of diet cokes a lot of burgers a lot of pizza and yes that does add up someone asked if i quit my job or gave up my house to pull this off we can't all just live with our parents um so real quick i didn't quit my job i still own my business i was able to get a paycheck every other week for my business it was not as much as I would get if I was actually at work <laughs> and going into the job, but it was enough to kind of keep my life going a little bit. I still had to pay the mortgage on this house that I'm in right now. I was still paying my utilities. I was still paying my car payment. I think I had one at that time. And no, I don't live with my parents. I work really hard when I'm not on the trail so that I can take the four months off to hike so it's kind of like a work hard play hard situation we're gonna sprinkle in this nice comment because there's not many of those and it says that the roi on a long distance through hike is immense and i totally agree yes i spent fifty eight hundred dollars but that four month experience for me was just amazing and it's something i think about all the time just all the experiences I had on the AT, my first through hike, just, yeah, the return on my investment. <laughs> if I could get anything for $5,800, it would be a through hike. So with all this talk about money, I wanted to share with you something that you can actually get for free. And that is this sample packet of Element with eight different flavors of Element drink mixes inside. These little drink mixes is how I was able to stay hydrated and get my electrolytes in while I was through hiking. And I also drink them off trail in just my day-to-day -day life. Lately, I've been loving the chocolate flavors because they're meant to be enjoyed hot. So right here, I have the hot chocolate chai. I also love the hot chocolate mint, and I actually have the chocolate caramel coming in the mail tomorrow, which I am super excited to try. Uh, this has just been the most perfect, cozy winter drink for me because I feel like I'm having a treat, but I also know I'm getting the perfect amount of electrolytes in so I don't get dehydrated and get the headaches because this has just been a crazy time of year and I'm go, go, go. And sometimes I just don't drink enough water. So like I said, Element is my favorite electrolyte drink mix. And if you want to get one of these sample packs so you could try eight of their flavors, my link is drinkelement.com slash Nahamsha. I would personally recommend getting the chocolate medley box so that you can try some of these hot chocolate mixes. And then you can also get some of their staple flavors like the grapefruit, the raspberry, the citrus salt, and all those in this sample pack. So again, if you go to drinklmnt.com slash Nahamsha, you will get this free sample pack with any purchase on their website. One comment says, I think the fact that you had a lot of extra hostel and hotel stays makes the trail seem more accessible for those who don't feel like they could camp every single night. And that is true. If there's anything you've learned or seen from my daily through hiking vlogs it's that I can almost always find a hostel or a hotel to stay at so if you want to through hike but camping in the woods every night seems intimidating to you I feel like the Appalachian Trail is a great option because yeah there are a lot of hotels and hostel stays and I know people in my personal life that would love to through hike but also sleep inside every night and 
it could be possible. <laughs> this comment says, what were you buying? I seriously cannot believe food was that much. And like I said, I spent about $1,400 at grocery stores over those four months. And I honestly don't think that's that bad. I think that comes to about $11 a day on food at grocery stores, which is good considering I was just buying trail mix and protein bars and just stuff that I could carry in my backpack for the next three days. I honestly probably spend more than that on grocery stores at home off the trail. So yeah, food is expensive and it's probably the most important thing you need on a through hike because you need that food and energy. And like I said, I was buying some good foods to just keep my body feeling good and giving myself the energy to move forward. So yeah, food is expensive. But also the other categories that I was spending money on, I was always fixing my gear. So I was replacing my shoes when they got holes in them. I was replacing my water filter when it slowed down, replacing socks when they got holes in them. Sometimes gear just doesn't work out. I switched my clothing layers a couple times. In 2021, I went through a couple different backpacks actually, because some backpacks broke, the others just didn't like carry the weight well. So yeah, if I'm gonna be walking 20 plus miles a day, I wanna feel comfortable and having good gear was important. So I did spend a decent money, a decent amount of money on gear. Also spent definitely a decent amount of money on hostels, hotels, transportation, stuff like that to just keep me feeling good because I just needed the extra morale boost every now and then of a hostel, a shower, just laundry, stuff like that. It really does add up. Someone said they spent a total of $2,300 for their whole through hike and they got by the first 600 miles on the trail just from hiker boxes. And that can be an option if you wanna save money. There's, all, there's always hiker boxes at hostels full of gear and food that people just don't need anymore. Maybe they bought too much at the grocery store and they didn't want to carry it. So it's always an option to figure out what hikers don't need anymore and you can kind of share some of that. I didn't really rely on hiker boxes because for me personally, going into a grocery store and buying my own food was fun and it was something I looked forward to and having the exact food that I wanted and was craving on that next section of trail just kind of kept me going. But there's always maybe like oatmeal packets and ramen in the hiker boxes, but that would probably save you a quarter. <laughs> Someone said it's much better than an expensive trip to Disney. And that is something I agree with. I think I even mentioned that in my video that I spent $5,800 on a four month I don't quote unquote vacation. <laughs> it was really fun, but some people will spend $5,800 in just one week to take their family to Disney. So I personally feel like I got so much more out of this four months than I would if I went to Disney for one week. But again, everyone is so different. <laughs> Someone asked if I stayed in a hotel every other day and I basically did. Not specifically a hotel every day, but when I did the math, I slept in my tent 62 times and slept somewhere else not in my tent 62 times so it was half and half sometimes it was a hostel sometimes it was a hotel a trail angels home a friend's house when i came through new hampshire i was even able to stay in my house a couple times um, my parents would come to visit and book us all a hotel so it was really 50 50. how much were the costs before hitting the trail by this, I mean all the equipment plus travel to and from the trail. That is a really good question and I haven't put that together, but I can definitely make a video about how much it costs leading up to the trail. So how much my whole gear setup cost and travel and all that, if you're interested. So let me know about pre-trail expense questions because I can make a video about that. So again, someone said, $5,800 for a four month vacation, terrific. So someone else is on board and agrees with that. Someone, on the other hand, someone else also said, how silly. And that made me laugh because yes, a four month through hike isn't everyone's cup of tea. For me, it sounds fun to someone else. It could sound pretty silly and that is what it is. Someone said they plan on doing the AT with their wife 
and plan on spending less than $3,000. If they run out, they run out. They really don't care if they only make it three months. It's going to be the best, the best vacation ever. And that is such a good outlook um, because you, of course, don't have to do the whole, tra whole trail. If you have $3,000 and you just want to see how long you can get out there and hike, I, I think that's amazing. You can even kind of pick and choose your favorite sections if you want. You can do New England, you can do the national parks. Like, I think that's such a great idea and hope they have an amazing time. Someone said you had to eat tons of calories. And that is also a very good point because I was also probably spending a lot more in the grocery stores and at restaurants because I was burning so many calories. So that is a really good point about like why that food cost would add up so fast. Someone said that through hiking is a rich person sport. And I don't want people to believe that that is, that has to be true because there are so many different people that through hike. Like I said, there's a huge demographic of people that through hike right after college. And people also plan for through hikes for years and years and years. They save up money, they make sacrifices. Maybe they sell their car or get rid of some things. They move back home with their parents for a few months to try to save up some money. They buy gear over the course of years and put it on their Christmas list and buy gear secondhand. And there's just so much planning that can go into a through hike and saving up for it that if you just look at through hiking and think like, oh, you have to be rich to do that, you're not going to do it. But if you look at through hiking and think, oh, I can work really hard and make this happen. I can set goals and just and through hike and make this dream a reality, it can be possible. So I don't like that mindset of you need to be rich to through hike. So we're just gonna cross that one off. This one I think is my biggest pet peeve. I would just sleep in a tent. To me, that's the whole point of through hiking. Anything other than a tent or a shelter is cheating. And that phrase, just the point of through hiking uh, it makes me so mad because there is no point of through hiking. Everyone through hikes differently. Everyone is out there for a different reason. To me, the point of through hiking is not to sleep in my tent every single night. It's to push myself physically. It's to set this goal to hike from Georgia to Maine and just get out, push my body physically, have this great adventure and experience all these things. If the only thing I focused on was sleeping in my tent every single night, I would be miserable. But then there are people that the point of through hiking is to sleep in their tent every night. Maybe they just want to get away from society. They want to just have this alone time and be one with nature. But that's not me. There's no point of through hiking. There's no cheating if you stay at hostels. Hostels are such a huge part of the Appalachian Trail community. Trail towns are amazing. There's just so many things you can do besides sleep in your tent every single night to have a success successful through hike. So don't let anyone tell you you're cheating if you stay at a hostel. Maybe the people sleeping in their tent every night are the ones missing out on the hostel life and meeting all those amazing people because that's how I met a lot of people on the trail was going to hostels and hanging out in the common area and hiking with people the next day. I don't know, that's how I had my fun. Someone else said they also spent $5,800 on their through hike, so it's normal. <laughs> like, I'm, I wasn't doing anything crazy out there. Someone said my hike was full of numerous hostel visits. If one wanted to camp more and spend less in town, that number could be brought down significantly. And yes, that's 100% true. I'm not arguing with that. I did spend a lot of money in hostels. Also within the hostels, I was also buying private rooms. So even if you just switch from private room to bunk room, that number would go down a lot. But in that full video where I broke down all my spending, you could see exactly how much money I spent at the hostels. And yeah, obviously the less hostels you stay at, the less you have to spend at hostels. So if you are trying to budget your through hike a little bit, yeah, just maybe skip a hostel every now and then. Someone said this is better than spending money on an ugly purse collection. And yep, that's true. I'd rather have a through hike than a couple 
ugly purses in my closet that I never wear. We finally made it to the bottom of the comments. The last one says, moral of the story here, guys, you can through hike and have fun too, which is a great one to leave it off as because through hiking is supposed to be fun. I saved up a lot of money for the through hike because I just wanted to have the time of my life. I didn't want to say no to things. I wanted to go to the restaurants. I wanted to stay at the hostels. I just wanted to have the time of my life and I did. So we're just going to leave it off at that. I hope you enjoyed my little chat, rants, little conversation about money on the Appalachian Trail. Let me know if you are planning a through hike of the Appalachian Trail next year because I feel like it's time that a lot of people are starting to put out the AT 2024 content and I'm excited to follow along with a couple people's adventures next year. So that's going to be it for this one and I will see you in the next video. Bye!